Hello, uh, today I'm going to be talking about how we can make uh, visual animations um, in Python using Matplotlib. Um, it turns out that creating an animation is really about creating a bunch of um, kind of static, on-moving figures and combining them together. Um, for example, I'm on the page here for animation on Wikipedia, and I can see on the right there's this animated bouncing ball, and that's a combination of these six um, figures up above, right? It's just showing those uh, each of those kind of um, still figures in sequence to produce that bouncing uh, result. So each of these still figures is called a frame. And the real key to making animations in Python is figuring out a good way to um, create a bunch of different frames and glue them all together without too much work. And so the thing we're going to use for that is something called fun animation in, in matplotlib. And I'm just going to take a look at this. Um, API here quick. And um, what this does for us is it lets us write a single function that's able to draw one frame. And then we call Funk Animation. What Funk Animation will do is it will repeatedly call our function to generate all the frames. And uh, then it'll glue those, um, glue those frames together, together for us. So what we're going to have to pass it at the very least is we're going to have to say, okay, here's the figure um, that I want to use. And here is a function that we should call uh, to generate the animation. So I'm going to head over here, and you can see I've already done some imports. Right? I imported pyplot as plt, I have this function animation, and, um, and then I have this HTML function that we've used before. Um, remember that this lets me put HTML directly into my notebook, and, and I'll be showing you why we need that. Okay, so as a first step, um, I need to create some region where I can create my animations. So I'm going to call plt.subplots, and let me rerun this. There we go. And so I'm going to capture that. I have my figure and my AX with that. And, um, and then what I want to do is I want to have some sort of function that can draw a frame, right? So maybe I'll just call that draw a frame, and, um, and maybe I'll pass something in, some, call something like frame uh, number, and, um, and then I need to draw something here. Uh, and this can be called many different times, right, to show what the picture looks like at different points during the video. And, um, and so for this first example, I'm just going to do the most simple thing, which is it'll be a video of a number counting off, right? So in the middle of here, we're going to have a number and it's going to get larger. Okay, so I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say ax dot uh, text. And then remember, I have to have an x, y, and then the string. And so for that, I want to put it in the middle. So I'm going to say 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5. And then for the string, I'm just going to convert the frame number um, to a string, like so. And, uh, and there's some other details. Like let's make it very large. And um, of course, that doesn't do anything because I haven't called it yet. Um, let's actually call this draw frame. Uh, I'm going to draw frame 0. Uh, let, let me actually center that. I'm going to say uh, vertical alignment equals center and horizontal alignment equals center, uh, like so. And so that's frame 0, uh, frame 1, frame 2. And I, I'm really doing this manually now, but you could imagine if I was flipping between each of these automatically fast enough, it would look like a little video of this number that keeps increasing. Okay, so. To go back to that function I was looking at over here, uh, we need to give it two things. Right? I need a figure, uh, and then the function that's going to draw on top of that figure. And I've done both, right? I've created my figure, and I've created a function. So now instead of calling that function myself, I'm going to ask matplotlib um, to loop a bunch of times and draw it for me. OK, so I'm going to call that. And I need to say this is a figure I want to draw on. And um, I'm not going to call this function myself. I'm just going to pass a reference, right? So this is going to loop a bunch of times, then call this, loop again, and call this. And then there's a couple other um, things here. Like we have to say how many frames we want. Um, this is actually optional. It defaults to 100. Um, but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to say we have 10 frames. <clears throat> and, uh, and I'm going to run this, and, and nothing's going to happen, at least yet. Uh, because this is just going to return an animation object. So I'm going to capture that animation object uh, like so. 
And um, one last detail here, right, is that I want to print something here to see when this is being called. Okay, so nothing exciting yet, um, because uh, creating an animation object in an Excel doesn't call this yet. Uh, Funk Animation is only really going to start calling this when I try to convert this to some sort of video format. Um, so let me do that. Um, I'm going to say um, animation to HTML5 uh, video. Um, and, and this is going to be a huge string, and I'm just going to shorten that a little bit. So let me shorten that string. I just want to look at the first um, few thousand characters so you can see what it's about. So I'm going to run that, and it'll take a moment. And, and now you see that since I'm actually generating uh, generating this, I'm calling it a bunch of times. It should be about 10. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I guess there's the 10 times for the frames and then also the um, initial one, right? Remember that we saw this was being called before to initialize the area. And, uh, and then I get back this huge string. And uh, the string is HTML, right? I have a, a video tag, has a width and a height. And um, the interesting th thing here is the data, right? I have all the data uh, for the video, and you can see why I shortened it, right? Because it was a lot um, to print out. And then down here I see, well, there's a bunch of garbage, right? So I'm gonna have to clean this up in some way. Okay, so I'm doing that. And, and this, this string, right? I mean, I could do different things to it. Um, like if I wanted to, I could, um, I could say something like with open uh, out.html uh, to write it. I'm not actually going to go through with this example, but I, if I wanted to, I could write it um, to that file. Uh, for our purposes, though, I just want to immediately see the animation, and that's why I want to directly put that animation here. Right? So um, let me let me clean this up. Right? If I didn't want to uh, create an HTML file with the video. Um, I could just call HTML here. And, and remember how this works, right? I can say something like hi, uh, like so. And But the, the HTML I want is what's returned by this um, to video function, right? So I paste this here. And uh, now when I run this, there, there's still issues to be worked out here, uh, but it will generate some sort of video file. And so I see, okay, there's some sort of video and, and if I wanted to, I could write, um, I could click on this corner and I could download it instead of watching it. Um, now the, the problems here are pretty obvious, right? I have these two different things. I have the video version, and I also have the still version, and then all the numbers are on top of each other. Okay, so let's fix um, that first problem. How could I um, not show the second image? And the way to suppress it, or at least one way, there's many, is that this figure uh, can be closed, right? If you close a figure before the cell ends, it doesn't throw to output. Okay, so let me do this. Um, uh, I am going to capture this uh, HTML to a variable that I'll be using, and after I've captured that, I'm going to close the figure. So you might expect it would be something like figure.close. It's not, kind of strangely. Instead, it's plt, right? Matplotlib.close. And then I pass in the figure. I'm going to run this again. And, um, and and now you see I just have the one animation. I don't have that extra still image anymore uh, because I closed it before the cell finished. Okay, so that's better. Um, other thing though, right? I don't want all these numbers on top of each other. Uh, there's multiple ways to solve this problem. Um, one is, and maybe the easiest way, is that I could say uh, ax dot clear, well I guess clear area, and that's just called CLA, and, and what that's trying to do is before it draws another one of these text areas, it's trying to delete any prior ones, right? So each frame is starting from a clean slate, and, and, and that's helpful when we want this function to draw everything for us, right? There's other options that will sometimes be more convenient, um, but this will at least solve our problem um, in one way. Okay, so I see the number is counting off. Um, this was the option one that we can use. Uh, the option two is that we just create the text once and then we modify it. Right, so here's option two. I'm going to create it up here and uh, I'm going to capture it in a variable. So maybe I'll say text equals 
that. And, and, and of course, at this point, you know, I don't have frame number yet, so I have to uh, leave this empty. Um, but now what I can do in, inside of this function, instead of drawing a new text area each time, um, I can just modify this existing one here. Excuse me, let me pause that. I feel like it's probably distracting to see that while, while I'm doing the demo. So I could say text.set text, and, um, and then I want to convert the frame number to a string. Right, so I'm going to run that, and, um, and I get the same thing then. I have that counter uh, that's ticking up again. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking about soon is, um, is not only these frames, uh, but also we have this other variable called interval. And I'm going to let you play with uh, this a little bit before I um, type 2D. Uh, but basically what this is, is how much time, what is the time interval uh, between two frames? And that's in milliseconds. That's in milliseconds, which means if I want one second, then I would say a thousand. That's a one second interval. Right, so let, let me just show you what that looks like. I run this. And, and now I see it's counting up a little bit more slowly. It's doing about one frame uh, per second. Okay, so you're going to practice actually drawing um, a, a circle that's going to fly across the screen. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about how we can set these um, appropriately.